So welcome to Shotokan Karate Leadership School in Santa Rosa, California. What were your first impressions upon visiting our school? It's a lovely facility and I thought that the um, group was really welcoming. Everyone's very nice and it seems like they really enjoy doing karate. Uh, with decades of experience under your belt, what do you believe is the most transformative aspect of karate for young students? Self-control, the ability to control your emotions under stress and it teaches kids goal setting, not to give up, and just uh, how to take control of what's going on around them. Uh, as a seventh degree black belt, can you share one pivotal moment in your journey that solidified your de dedication to this martial art? There's a lot. Um, I liked karate from the start. I liked that it was allowed me to be me. Uh, I think karate is really good for everyone, but for me, um, it let me be me. It let me. I wasn't into team sports. I didn't like sports. I liked karate. I liked the challenge. So there's like there's so many. But for me, it's just it let me be me. How has the landscape of karate instruction evolved since you first began training students? It's more scientific and more sport, sports psychology, sports medicine. Uh, you hear more phrases like plyometric. The exercises are mechanically safer than they used to be, what we used to do. Yeah. There's things we don't do now, which if we knew back then, we wouldn't have done them. So you have more longevity now. Uh, what motivates you to keep teaching, especially after all these years? I've been doing it since I was nine years old. This is what I do. Um, I love teaching. I'd, I'd like to see the kids get it. Um, I like to see uh, the adults get it. You know, like it, it clicks, and then they get it, and they're there for fitness, or they're there for health, or they're there for self-defense. But just seeing them get it, the kids and the adults, like you can tell when it clicks, and then they're enjoying it, and they, and yeah, they get it. Now, every instructor has their own unique teaching philosophy. What's yours, and how has it shaped the way you approach karate? I want it to be challenging but fun, right? Serious but fun. Like, you want to have a good time. You want to enjoy the training. You don't want to be afraid of the training. So you want to have a good time, but then you want to be serious. You want to know how to switch it. It's like turning a light switch. You want to know how to turn it on and off. So Riverside and Santa Rosa, California, both have their own distinct cultures and vibes. Have you noticed any differences in karate communities between the two? No, no. everyone's got good spirit. I mean, it's just, people are people. Um, you guys might have, you guys have nicer weather. <laughs> Makes you guys a little more mellow. <laughs> yeah. uh, you've trained countless students over the years. Are there any success stories that particularly stand out to you? They're all success. I mean, if they, if they stay, uh, you know, to like black belt, that's a success, you know. Hopefully you can get them to all to um, commit to doing it forever, you know. If they leave and then come back, that's a success because at least you instilled something that made them want to come back. Shotokan Karate Leadership School is dedicated to empowering children with lifelong skills. Mm -hmm. How do you think your teachings align with this mission? Very well. I mean, it's all about you want to give kids confidence. You want to give them courage. Right? You want to be able to stand up for themselves. They want to be able to recognize right from wrong. You don't ever want to have a kid that um, succumbs to like peer pressure, things like that. Yeah. Karate teaches you how to be strong and stand up for what's right. And yeah, so it aligns perfectly. In your perspective, how does karate foster friendships and promote healthy lifestyles among students? Uh, especially if you start to travel. I have friends all over the world now. 44 years later, I've got friends in Germany and England and Hungary and Romania and all over the place. And then I have my best friend started karate next to me, and he's still my best friend. Yeah. We've been friends now 44 years. That's longer than some people's marriages. You know, so it builds friendship. Mm -hmm. ah. We always emphasize building confidence and character in our students. From your extensive experience, uh, why do you think karate is so effective in achieving this? Um, because you, you um, deal with stress, you're put under stress when you're training. We're asking you to perform techniques to a level of perfection, realizing that there's no such thing as perfection, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm 53 now and I still think I can get better, so I still train every day. I still look at my keyhole in the mirror, I, I, you know, can I be stronger and faster, can I get down, can I get low, you know? So it's, it lets you stress test everything all the time. Yeah. Uh, being a visiting instructor, what unique experiences or techniques do you hope to bring to our students here in Santa Rosa? Just my enthusiasm and my energy. I, know, I mean, I really love karate. 
Um, I think karate is good for everybody. You know, and just um, you got to do it with like a strong heart, strong spirit. And that really shows in your classes. Yeah, thank you. What would you say to a child who's hesitant to try karate for the first time? You take them on the floor and you hold their hand. You just, you, you got to get them to enjoy it. And they need to see how much you enjoy it. And if you're enjoying it, they're going to enjoy it. And you got to be nurturing. Right? You, you, you've you've got to like plant the seed and then you got to water it. Karate is as much a mental discipline as it is a physical one. How do you integrate mindfulness and focus into your techniques? And it goes back to you want to perfect the technique. You got to think about it. Right? So it's a difference between, say, a martial art and, say, aerobics. Yeah. Right? A martial art, you have to think. And you have to visualize. You have to, it's almost like daydreaming. You've got to see the person that you're, you've got to put a target in front of you. You've got to punch or kick at that target or block at that target. And then you've got to put a real person in front of you and then you're doing the same thing. Yeah. So. Why is it important for schools like ours in Santa Rosa to have visiting instructors like yourself? I think it's great for everyone to, to see different teaching methodologies. I mean, it's all the same karate. You know, it's all Shotokan, but it's, it's my flavor or style of Shotokan. It's Sensei Marty's style. I mean, it's all the same, but we have different, we have different personalities. We have different body types. We have different experiences that, that shape our karate. So it's nice to see someone else. Like, we could be teaching the exact same technique. He's your teacher. He's teaching front kick. And I come in and say one little thing differently and you go, oh yeah, right? That happens all the time. It's like, I said that, but I didn't say it the way that got you and somebody else may. So it's good to have a little experience outside the box. Uh, when you're not instructing, how do you continue to grow and evolve in your own karate practice? Uh, I self-train. I literally, I don't think I'm ever not teaching. Um, I daydream about karate all the time. Don't watch me drive my car. I'm back for striking the passenger seat. I'm, yeah, it's bad. All I think about is karate. Yes. I mean, that's, I wake up thinking of karate. I go to bed thinking about karate. Uh, what's one piece of advice you give our young students aspiring to reach levels of mastery that you've achieved? Don't give up. Don't get frustrated. When you don't want to be here, today, this is the most important one. And this goes for any activity that like requires physical mastery. The days you don't want to go are the days you need to go the most. The days you don't feel like doing it, the days you need to do it the most. Then you get a small victory. Then it becomes easier. The minute you decide, uh, it becomes easier to do it again and again and again. So you want to always, no, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Uh, our school prides itself in creating leaders. Um, in your experience, how does karate instill leadership qualities into its practitioners? It gives them confidence, you know. To be a leader, people got to trust you. I mean, you got to trust yourself. You got to have self-confidence, and that will attract people. People like confident, right? So if you have confidence, it's going to attract other people to you. And good leaders have strong self-confidence. Over the years, what has remained your favorite aspect of teaching karate? I just like seeing everyone on the floor having a good time. I'm not so much sport based anymore. I like just doing karate for the sake of doing karate. And I think the beauty of karate is you get to tell your body what to do. You don't let it tell you. Everybody can get more flexible. Everybody can get stronger. It doesn't matter your age. You can always improve, right? You don't have to be the best person in the club, but you want to be the best 15 year old in the club or the best 73 year old in the club. That's your goal. You don't got to be better than everyone else in the room. Just try to be your best. We're honored to have you here with us. Um, what are your hopes for the future collaboration between your school in Riverside and Chodokan Karate Leadership School in Santa Rosa? Um, continued friendship, cross training, you guys come down and see us, I hope, come up here. Yeah, just, I like, it's family. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like I've gone someplace new, it's just, it feels like family. It's like, it's the same karate. Yeah. We have the same teachers, right? We, so. Same experiences, you know, so yeah, it just feels like family.